Welcome to this episode of Keep the Hotel Empty. I'm your host, Eric Paul. In studio today, we are grateful to welcome in photographers, videographers, and operators of the Nature Compound, Zach and Brian of Nature Studios. In this episode, Zach and Brian discuss with us how they got started individually, what brought them together, and some of what it takes to capture the true vibes of any performance. Please enjoy. Welcome to Keep the Hotel Empty. Today we've kept the hotel empty to welcome in photographer, videographer, producers of the Campfire Sesh, Nature Studio Zone, Zach and Brian. Welcome, gentlemen. What's going on? Thank you for having us. Yeah, man. It's so good to see you, man. It's been so long. It's Dude, been, it's been a Seems minute. like it's been forever since I've been able to see your beautiful face. It's oh, been like, don't I think, a uh, year or so, two yeah. years, maybe even longer. Yeah, so. well, everybody's been busy in between, and that's, that's a good thing. So that's kind of what I want to get to. I know you guys got a lot rolling right now, but I want to kind of start where you guys start independently. Mm -hmm. When a camera gets into your hand, how you go from I'm Zach to I'm Zach with a camera, and then then we'll get that from you, and then I want to hear you how you come first? together. Go ahead. I'll go first. Uh, it, it, a little long version, or you want the short, yeah, uh, well, wrapped up yeah, version? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you weren't uh, set out to be a photographer. This wasn't you when no, you were a little <laughs> when you were a little not. kid. You weren't saying, "Oh man, National Geo, here I come." Absolutely not. It's so weird how the universe just works works its way out and finds what 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 you're supposed to be doing in uh, in life and. It was crazy. STLR Media, uh, my buddy Craig and Eric had a little online station back in the day. And I, I went on there just to do a little uh, work on some sports shows and maybe pull some different uh, guests on, uh, maybe some music bands or whatever it was. Uh, maybe, basically like a booker for them. Uh, and it, it was just funny how it worked out. My first person that I pulled into the the uh, studio there for an interview was Sarasota's own Summer Survivor Zone. Oh, Paul nice. King. Nice. Like, literally, maybe one of the only people I wrangled into the studio, but it happened to be Paul. And from there on out, like, I just forged a relationship with Paul King, and, and he's one of the most influential people and in why I'm doing what I'm doing right now is, is because of Paul and how he got me into this. And basically, he got us... Uh, got us backstage to do some interviews with some artists and such. And we had a photographer that we brought in for the weekend. Said photographer is a beautiful human being, Greg Cruz. Shout out to Greg Cruz. He uh, he does a lot of homeless work in Sarasota. So he nice. got an award from the county, from the city. Very that cool. Day. It was Saturday of Rise Up, I believe it was 2017. And we had so no early in the Ray Rise Up world, too. We had no, yeah, we had no photographer for that day. So basically he's like, here's the camera. I'm going to put it on auto for you and just... Go at it. So I did. I basically just just point and snap, like just sprayed and prayed, as I say. Yeah. Uh, he ended up editing the photos, came out halfway decent. But that day, I fell in love with concert photography and basically gigging. And but even driving to the festival that day, you have no intention, no inkling you're going to take a picture. I'm there to party. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there to have a good time. I'm hanging out backstage for the first time in my life. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just living it up. I'm living it up. Uh, but then to get to the pit and to be able to fire some shots for the first time was a was a beautiful thing and I fell in love with it and just started running with it basically. So who was the first artist you took a photo of? Do you remember who the first one was that, that day? Day, I believe it might have been Ayaterra. Do you still got that photo logged away somewhere? No, the funny thing is, is all those shots that I took that day ended up going to Craig and he ended up editing what, you know, he thought was worthy yeah. and, and then giving it to Craig and Eric and then Reggae Rise Up. Um, but no, I never actually got to see a lot of the photos that I took that day. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. It, it was really crazy. But it felt good enough. Didn't even really matter what they looked like. It, it didn't. No, it was, it was just a, it was, it was one of those feelings like I was trying to get this station back to kind of do some interviews and get backstage, you know, and kind of mingle with some of the artists and, and create some content for us. But it just opened up a whole new door for myself to start creating content that I didn't even know I had in me, to be honest with you. So that's how you get camera in hand. That's how I got camera in hand, yeah. <laughs> How'd you get camera in hand? Oh, man, that was, uh, I actually went, I started in 2015, started studying and doing like some nature photography. Oh, cool. And uh, then uh, by 2019, I went to Reggae Rise Up for the first time and just fell in love with the whole music scene right there. Uh, then met Bata and was like, you know, I want to get into shooting music. And then he's like, let's, you just got to do it. Manifest your destiny right there. And 
And then Bada I, did the same thing to me, by yeah. the way. The <laughs> yeah. same exact thing. So, I, if it's not Paul King, it's Bada Scott. Yeah. 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 Both, of them, yeah, yeah. He, Both of them. We've he had, literally yeah. said the same thing to me. Visualize yourself backstage, interviewing these yeah. artists, getting backstage. He yeah. even said, having a split, smoking a split <laughs> with me backstage. <laughs> yeah. And I, the next year, I just was focused on that and he got really focused on that and yeah. the universe just kind of opens up for you yeah, so, so when by the something. following year i was shooting ready rise up so. so when you started it was nature photography that got you into it yeah were yeah, you I here was, in, you were here in florida then uh yeah i moved down here like in 2010 it was and then by 2015 i started photography like i really i was doing construction my whole life i ran a boat detailing business and things like that same N- same time too construction like, started buying yeah. camera gear and was like thinking you know getting into it but like you know, just what a was the inspiration for, for that? Uh, just travel. Uh, when I got kicked out of Virginia and moved down here, uh, I was uh, it was really just like traveling and like getting around and going to see my kids. I was like, I just want to capture it all. Document. Didn't really have pictures of me when I was growing up. Sorry about that. No, you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, didn't have pictures of me growing up, so I was like, you know, I want to start documenting it now and uh, getting all the pictures now. And so started as just that, but then I just fell in love with it more and more as I was growing into it. So you guys both take your separate paths getting there. Yeah. How long till from when you're taking these pictures you didn't think you were going to take in till now you're booking yourself as the photographer for the events? How long did that take? Well, uh, we all we both started at different times, right? So right. I started yeah. probably, what, three years before you yeah, did? Like 17, I was like 19. Yeah, I'm so, running around with yeah. you guys, the Utah, some right. survivors. You know, doing my own thing, a lot of free stuff, not a lot of just getting a portfolio built up. Then I met Brian, and Brian was the type of guy, and I get a lot of this, and and a lot of photographers and videographers probably get this too. They get their friends and people they meet kind of reaching out to them, say, hey, like, I've got a camera too. Like, hey, if you need some help, like, (laughs) let me come shoot with you. I can take pictures too. Right. And it's like, you know, you look at that, you're like, okay, kid, like, do it on your own. Do it how I did it. Like, I'm not going to – and that's basically what I said to him. I was like, here, this is what you got to do. Reach out to the artists. Reach out to the the uh, management teams, uh, record labels. Get your media passes like I had to get mine. Build your relationship like I built mine. Take those road trips. And do it on trips. your own, kid. Yeah. And, I, and, and t- today – and I'll tell th- – I told this to Brian many times. I, I was – mean to the kid like i didn't give him a chance <laughs> it was it was kind of funny like him and uh phil both like i was reaching out to them and you know you know some other amazing photographers around here like them two like really stood out so i reached out to them and they kind of blew me off but it's, you know, <laughs> but that's that doesn't slow that's doesn't slow me nobody's, down. Yeah, nobody's yeah. out there to give you yeah. a, a shot hand, yeah. you've got to show that you deserve the shot yeah. and then and then, and then you do it and right. then i run into him at the pit and it was uh um, was it at Benoit? Re- Revolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Soldier uh, and, and Revolution. Was it that show? It was. Um, no, it was. Uh, you know what it was? It was. It was uh, Revolution, and I think Collie Buzz. Collie Buzz. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah and, at they, and, and Phil and Zach were both there, and they're like, "Yeah, you earned your spot here. Like, you made your way here." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about Phil. This is Phil yeah. D. Simone. This yeah. is, and I, I say this in front of everybody, and I embarrass him all the time. This is the goat of photography, yeah. concert photography, in my mind. He is the bee's knees. Uh, we brought him in as our head photographer. So any uh, festivals we do, he runs our photography for us. Yeah. He is the shit. So anybody listening to this, go check out Phil, <laughs> Phil D. Simone on Instagram. Yeah. It's Kafilka Fish. That's with the K, Kafilka Fish. It's like some kind of play on words, I guess. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> Got to check him out. He's really cool yeah. dude. He's uh, done a lot of work for like big artists, shot for like Taylor Swift, Rod Stewart, cool. Rolling Stones. So like... He's he's a kid that's really doing it right, and we love Phil to death. Yeah. And but getting back to the story, with with Brian, yeah. basically I, I shoved him off. <laughs> you know, I, I just pushed him to the side. Got to do it on your own. Well, Brian's Brian's. Well, got some what muscle. point were you at in this? Because you had you were just freelance at that point. I was right? freelance. Yeah. I was picking up gigs every now and again. I was getting paid and stuff, yeah. but mostly I was just like shooting for summer survivors at rise up and stuff doing the small gigs getting free bands you know just to go in and shoot and so the grind of that was a couple of years it was like three four years for me i didn't start really start making money uh and actually gigging and making money from our gigs till we partnered up and how we partnered up was just basically we realized we were two like-minded individuals and to be able to find another person that's as like-minded as you and understand the grind and the hustle 
that you have to put yeah. in because it's not an overnight success and we are yeah. nowhere near where we want to be. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we're not saying we're the bee's knees by any means, but we've hustled a lot to get where we're going. And um, it's hard when you start from the bottom and have to build up the equipment and stuff and the cameras and stuff. You're talking tens, eleven thousand, twelve thousand oh, yeah. dollars I've spent on gear. That's just and the alone. hours to That's match. Just him alone. I mean, together we got like thirty, thirty plus grand in equipment and stuff. And I mean, we're nowhere near scratching the surface yeah. on what we want. Yeah. to have or do like you know yeah. what i mean and well that's but, a good thing that yeah. that keeps the drive alive but the hustle is what brought us together it's like we were like all working the shows and i was like what you know there's no reason we should be working against each other we should come together and i was like running natural photography and framing he had sakari photos right and uh you know we, we were just like let's just join it together and you know come up with something else and we came up with the nature studios so you were doing framing too? Tell me about that. Yeah, uh, we started the business uh, natural photography and framing, and I was doing photos and framing, and uh, we have like a CNC. We do some woodwork, like carving and stuff. We've done uh, some wedding plaques and you know some plaques on the walls for uh, some uh, customers, and then uh, then when, you know the framing of the pictures that we do. So, so it wasn't just that. straight event photography, yeah, yeah. even out of the game. No, no, it was it kind of weird. Like he, his parents moved like literally five minutes away from where I lived <coughs> at the time, about two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't in town. Like we were friends at, from shows. Yeah. But when I found out he lived like literally two minutes away as a coach, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, let me come over and yeah. just come chill. So of course, Brian's down. I come over and chill. His dad's cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, light up start smoking and stuff yeah. and then he starts telling me about what they're doing at the the house and how they're rebuilding Goals and remodeling and everything so yeah. literally from that day forward i have not left <laughs> I, I was it's, there it's every yeah. day helping yeah. them remodel yeah. rebuild we the were, studio shop yeah. the the compound area and from that day forward we've been partners and we've been grinding not only at the studio and compound trying to build that up but also our business as well. So how do you get from blowing them off evolves to <laughs> evolves to I see you, I'll tell you uh, get grinding in the same spot as yeah. me. Uh -huh. How long of it is between you first see him in the pit to you you you've gone there for one day and you never left? What's that was, road like? Well, okay, so what it was with Brian was and I've had this like I said, uh, people reach out and say, "Hey, look, I can help you." And you know, I could take photos too and I want to do this. Right. The thing was is he had to do it on his own. And he had the drive to do it, and that's what I wanted to see before I partnered up with anybody. You know, that before was, he said you know, were coming over exactly, and not going home. Exactly, but he did it. He had <laughs> the hustle. He went out there. He got his first media passes up in Virginia for Common Kings and the movement. Oh, nice! Started yeah. taking some photos. Yeah. Granted, shit photos. He'd tell you today, not <laughs> no, good. So you started concert yeah. photography and event photography before you got here. Uh, actually, yeah, I was up in Virginia just on vacation and uh, going up to see my kids. And uh, oh, gotcha. uh, one of my friends were like, yeah, you know, they knew I was trying to get into the scene. They're like, I know the movement and I get you in, uh, give you a shot. And the next day I was posting some photos and the uh, Comic Kings were playing that night. They're like, you want to come do some photos for us? And I jumped right on it. And by the time I was back here in Florida, I was joined in with uh, Top Shelf Music out of California. Nice. And uh, was doing, that's when I did the Revolution show and joined them. And Yeah, so was he doing, was working yeah. for Top Shelf, basically getting photo passes to yeah. go shoot free. And write art free articles yeah, about and Yeah, do so, an article for, for the magazine and stuff like that. Yeah, so I started with that and was just going and going and going, doing all kinds of shows for Top Shelf. And at the same time, like, figuring out how to build my own and, you know, get that all going for, for ourselves, too. So, so for both of you, a lot of it in the beginning was taking everything you could do to build these portfolios, yeah. make these things. It was yeah. like that at yeah. the beginning of Nature Studios as well. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah. one, so one how does... One job in particular we took with Pepper, Fortunate Youth, oh, and Slightly yeah, Stupid yeah, yeah. over in Coco. Coco, yeah. Free show. Mm -hmm. Give Gump us a couple City. passes. Yeah. We're going to go up there. We're going to shoot some, some video on our brand new uh, 6K cinema cameras that we just got. Yeah. We just want to build some content up, basically. This well, is first gig this as is Nature one Studios? Of, one, one of the, of the first, first, the, first real video gigs with, with we our, When we invested into the new cinema cameras, this was, I mean, we did the Reese Brothers here locally, and yeah. then we went over there to Coco and did We the, did Serenation locally. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah, was yeah. first big step. This is yeah, first, yeah. I mean, Pepper. Yeah. 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 Big steps yeah. with the yeah. cinema cameras. Common Kings, all huge bands. This is out in Coco. Uh, the videos we did there basically um, catapulted us forward. Yeah. The Pepper video we did. So what was that night video. like? What was the drive over there like? What are you thinking? Uh, 
this is how <laughs> awesome this is going to be, basically, yeah. uh, to be able to work with such a big band like Pepper. And the reason why we got that Pepper gig is I was working for Reggae Rise Up in-house that year at, at the festival. and Here in St. Pete? Yeah, yeah, and I shot a lot of stuff at Pepper's set, and I absolutely destroyed it. Like, I'm not one to, like, Toot my own horn. If he, he'll tell you, I say it was a good shit. day. I say all my stuff is shit, absolute <laughs> shit. Honestly, like even today, I'll be like, oh that shit. But it's actually like halfway decent. Yeah. But I shot some really good shit from them. Like got like some good fish eye shots of the drummer and like nice Kaleo coming up with a fish eye like right up front of the stage. Just some yeah. really good shots, and I sent it into them. But started building that relationship from that day forward. Getting that opportunity to go do some free work for them over there in Coco. Just exploded people start we started handing that to bands and be like here check yeah. this out this is what we can do for you throw you a really good deal yeah. type so deal. that kind of became a calling card for what the yeah. the next step was it, yeah. exactly yeah i mean exactly. then when you get bands like uh pepper and fortune you sharing your videos out there you know and, i mean it's just really been blowing up like it didn't take long as soon as we got these cinema cameras and start working together nowhere near where we want to be yeah no, yeah we're well still, no, that's we're not doing this full we're time brian's, yeah, yeah. brian's full time basically yeah. i still the, have a full time job you know what i mean yeah. i i still do both it, it's still a grind it's still a hustle. yeah but like every day we're studying and, and working on new tricks and adding new stuff all the time like it's never ending so when you're watching the footage back that you got from mm -hmm. that first big show in coco what's going through your head a lot of criticism yeah yeah, just like, criticizing your better? work. Always. Yeah. yeah, everything yeah. we do. And usually it's me <laughs> criticizing him. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, like, bro, you need to stop doing this and do this. <laughs> like, you're doing too much of this. Hey, can you just, like, switch it up and do this, but then also do this? Oh, good, I'm, yeah. I'm very critical of I was going to say. He takes good, it very good, though. He's, I was going to say, partner. good. You got, I was going to say, good, you got a partner in crime yeah, that can yeah, take yeah. it with some grace. Yeah. Yeah. It's good criticism, though. Yeah. You always, know what I mean? I always go the extra mile doing some extra stuff, too. You know, like, just, you know. Taking, you know, trying different things, you know, adding new effects to it, you know, new new tricks to the shots, you know, just trying to go the extra mile, learn new things, you know. He, he does well, like what's, to learn. That's what's sure. some of the biggest stuff that you've been able to learn from each other, both coming from where you were your own entities to now having uh, a, a we, team we of two? We teach each other a lot. Uh, yeah. I think it's a it's a self-learning system with us because, yeah. uh, well, one, mm. he got into video a lot sooner than I did, so editing and stuff like that. So when I came on to Nature Studios, I knew Dick about editing video he taught me everything that i know now about editing clipping transitions all that kind of stuff so i owe a lot to him as far as that goes now we're kind of on the same level playing field yeah. and we can kind of he's equally actually taking over the coloring like because uh he's he went the extra mile kind of learning the color a little bit better and that was like, yeah he's that can really be tedious color, and i was like you know what you just run that and we we, we do the editing a lot together but uh, he fin he finishes up with a color. So as far as that goes, you've learned a lot from each other technically because you're yeah. doing everything in house. The two of you. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, everything. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> when we set up uh, campfire sets, which I'm sure we'll get into soon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, that's. Uh, and shout out to Sugar Shack one. Yeah, let's oh, let's yeah. Like, give them some props. A lot of uh, we've heard a lot of things about us that we were copycats and yeah. we're biting off of them and. But we give so much respect to yeah, those boys and what, what they they've do. done. Well, there's nine billion hustle. people in the world. Yeah, come on, now. there's room. But yeah. they've got so many guys over there doing great work. Yeah. Oh yeah, they got just an amazing us. team. Oh it's yeah, literally just us yeah. doing. It. So <laughs> yeah. when we're setting up lighting, setting up camera angles, and also when we're doing the campfire sesh, we're not doing it kind of like Sugar Shack does because there's only yeah. two of us operating yeah. cameras. So to provide multiple camera angles, we got to run multiple takes. Yeah. Right. So it's like. Not a full one take completely, but yeah. we're you know we're working on adding more gear and more equipment to everything, and we'll get to that point. But you know, right now we're we're working the best we can with the two of us, and we're still pulling it off. And I mean, like for us last, right now, it's about just making good content. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get our content and, and up. get better and better every time. We criticize the work each time we make it. What what parts of your workflows have been able to change now that you've got another person to help you? Where it's not you'd be able to tell the story that it's just the two of you instead of it's just me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our workflows definitely have changed. I mean, it's it's evened out, I guess. Uh, but like I, I said, mean, it's only two of us, so like our plates times. are full. When we're when we're both gigging and working working events and stuff, we go to work in the morning. We get off, go to a gig, and then the next day we're editing, whether that's photos or videos. Like a lot of people think, like we just go there, have fun, and we're just out there partying and what you don't, the camera, <laughs> and that it's all fun to us. But Come on. they don't understand <laughs> that when we're done shooting those fun events. We yeah, can, then got to go home, work, convert yeah. the 4K video to be able to work into Adobe, and yeah. then work it in Adobe for about eight hours, yeah. typically for a video or two. 
Yeah. It's yeah. crazy and amount that, of work. Yeah. yeah. And that's not all that bad. It's just that it isn't a... It's yeah. not a snap no. of the finger. No. For sure. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. With the production. Look at this production you yeah. got going on here. Yeah. This is a beautiful thing here. Yeah. yeah. Well, thankfully, I got a help. I got I got <laughs> yeah. two of us. Yeah. You guys are doing a great yeah, job. There's, the and there's times where we're able to bring in, like, help, like, Phil and uh, Badis Guy for audio or Brennan for writing. And, like, when we're running different events, we're able to bring in a little extra hand. And that's... That helps us out a lot to be able to say we can just focus on video and we know Phil is going to crush the photos or, you know, Brennan's got the writing or about has got the audio. Yeah, that's the thing. You Nature know. Studios is not just me and Brian either. We're yeah. just the, the owners of it, to the co-founders of the it. The nucleus. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. we brought in Phil to run our, our photo team. Yeah. We've got Brendan to do our writing. We yeah. brought this What do you mean in. by writing? Uh, well, we do a lot of stuff on our website. Yeah. We'll do gallery for events like and recaps. stuff. Like uh, oh. say the Comic King yeah. show last week, gotcha. Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did some photos. Brandon did a write up of the event, basically, yeah. and it's just gotcha. Yeah. People yeah. who haven't been there or people who were there can just go there and kind of relive the experience yeah. through our photos or video. So yeah. part of what you'll provide or you aim to provide or already do, by the sound of it, is Nature Studios is do the full recap. You're not talking not every event, but a lot yeah, of events yeah. we do. We do like well, you're able to. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like I said, it's just us doing everything. So yeah. if we choose to do it, if we feel like putting that on our plate, then we, we will. And yeah, because that's a, not only are we editing all the photos, editing all the video, then we're building the website and putting all that together. So it's, it's a lot to put together. But <laughs> Okay. Well, I don't mean to Tarantino a bit, but let's, uh, let's go back to where you go to the property and you start working for the first day because huh? this is what developed. This is where you do the campfire sesh, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, this is, yeah. so talk to me about how that day one develops into some of these things you got rolling. Uh, well, I mean, me and Brian's are, Brian are friends and I went yeah. over there to go hang out. Basically it wasn't, yeah, we, it which, wasn't anything, but just to hang uh, out. Maybe it's not like I asked him to come help or nothing, but, yeah, we were but no, you started from dead square one. There was no, yeah. talk to me about what campfire session looks like, what it is, how that okay. goes from a spot in so, the ground to, to what so, you're doing. Okay. So basically the yard is about a quarter acre of the backyard. It's very lush with oak trees and oak tree yeah. canopy and nice and stuff Beautiful like that. Property, yeah. There was very a cool. caveman yeah. fire pit, probably. Yeah. <laughs> four feet in diameter made of rock and glass and nails and yeah. just a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> in there. Kind of, was remind, a, kind of remind me of like up in the mountains, we used to go uh, sit around the fire and play music and like just drink and stuff. And, yeah, and yeah. so we were looking at that and we we're like, we need to make a campfire session. Like do. Well, hold yeah. on now. Hold yeah. on. No, no, let's back up a well, little yeah, bit. Cause we didn't have the name or nothing. First, like that, it yeah, wasn't yeah. campfire session. No, yeah, it wasn't, first yeah. it was poolside session. Yeah, because we do have the pool. And that was the first thing we did was a poolside sesh with Joey Calderero. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but an uh, artist from the other coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, that night we ended up doing a campfire sesh as well. Yeah. Um, that was a spontaneous thing? It, it, it sort was, of, yeah. It was. Because we have done a, we did a couple music videos actually on the property already. With, that uh, night I, around yeah, the yeah, fire. I, yeah. Oh. Island, uh, uh, Island Asylum. Yeah. And uh, we did a couple of uh, music videos on property already. And then Joey Cotterello came by and we were like, we can run a poolside sesh and a campfire sesh. But when we actually shot it and we were editing it, we were like, the poolside sesh is not ready yet. The campfire sesh is where, we're, where we need but to But at that time, we didn't have the campfire built. We just had that caveman thing. Yeah. So yeah. we literally dug up that four or five foot diameter of rocks and, and just nasty stuff. Like, <laughs> like five feet of ash with nails and glass and everything. Yeah. Dug that all up. Poured a concrete, probably two foot thick concrete slab, yeah. and then built with bricks a ten foot diameter fire pit. Dang. This is the yeah. ten foot. This isn't. This is not small. This is huge. Yeah. And then from that ten foot diameter fire pit, you've it's got like, about eight foot of sand that goes out. All so you around. got sand encompassing this big huge pit. And what we do is cool. on right. one side of the the fire pit, we'll put some chairs and stuff for the band to sit. Right. And on the other side, I'll be filming, and then Brian will be filming from another angle. Um, now, though, a new thing we just incorporated, we just got done finishing. Yeah. His, his dad just got done building was uh, a tree, basically a bench made out of uh, oak tree uh, awesome. that we cut down. We cut down a bunch of trees just to clean up the property and stuff to make it safe. And, and this is here in Sarasota. This yeah. is here in Sarasota, yeah. right down okay. the road, 12 minutes yeah. away. Okay. But he built this, this bench that will encompass half of a circle, basically, and it's all made out of all 100% oak tree wood slab right there on from the property too it's so. beautiful very it's, cool it's sanded down and then we filled in the cracks smooth. with uh, some orange resin resin so, so. it kind of looks like fire and yeah. stuff nice yeah. you'll have to yeah. check it out it's hard for me to describe like just talking bench, about yeah. it but it is a beautiful bitch it's lacquered up it's just it is absolutely gorgeous i can't wait to 
put that and add that into because when we're doing the campfire sesh, you have to build a scene. Yeah, this isn't just we, like we started off our first couple. It was really like just so empty, and we were like just looking at the video footage as we're editing. We're it was like, literally just a band with some plants. In the yeah, back. And we're like <laughs> and like a little lights moving. We're like, no, take out the changing color lights. We need add this. We yeah. need this. We need that. We started and we came up with this whole theme. You know, out of we put like a thousand foot of lights uh, all around. We the got top Edison camp. lights. Can't, oh, nice. the canopy, yeah. thousand canopy. foot all throughout yeah. the backyard. It's, so that lights up the backyard pretty yeah. good. And then we Crazy. did it around the bushes a little bit. We brought some uh, tiki, uh, torches, tiki in. torches in. And then uh, we, we uh, like I, we were calling a campfire stuff, so we decided to set up some tents and, you know, give it a nice little prop. Some two-person you know? since tents behind the band yeah. at the, as they're playing. Yeah. The one we did with Neverless, you know, Tommy and yeah, Neverless, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was, this is actually his idea, which yeah, was funny, good yeah. on him for coming yeah. up with this idea. But hey. to, start, to start the three sets of videos that we did for him, yeah. to start it, he was the, the band would start inside the tents like they're waking up from a slumber. Yeah. Ah, camp, yeah. they'd come out and they'd play their first song, their second song, their third song, and at the end of the third video, they all went to bed. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, the tent. Yeah. So, uh, slowly just incorporating more and more stuff to kind of build a, a scene, a little more of a vibe there, uh, adding the tents. Now the bench is being added. It's going to yeah. add an, another cool, natural vibe to the yeah. campfire session we're excited about. So, how long between day one when you decide you're not going home or you're going to, or at least if you're going home, you're <laughs> oh, coming back tomorrow? He's even moved in now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I actually live there now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I bought an RV with the wife. Yeah. This nice. is another separate story. Bought a 38-foot Class A RV. Hell yeah. We renovated it, and we basically live on property. Yeah. This is commitment. Yeah. I mean, we, when we decided, like, I mean, we were both sitting with photography cameras, and we were like, we need to go into video, and uh, we right. just made the commitments to buy into those cameras. Literally, like, like that week we said that, I been, said, okay, I'm maxing out my card. Yeah. My maxing D &H, out the card. My D and H photo. Well, yeah, we're I both am maxed maxing out. <laughs> that MF her out and it was literally eight grand. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. Just Dang. Like I that. mean the memory card that you use is like eight hundred dollars by itself. I mean it's <laughs> That is a it's world crazy. I'm getting yeah. thrown into. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. I thought audio right was a thing, but man, video is a is a thing. It's yeah. both, both a thing. Yeah, man. I yeah. mean, mics, the lighting, to yeah. the video all equipment. It. It just so, what was the impetus for that? How how did you decide that uh, video we were going to bite this one off? As far as going into video, yeah, because that was the next step in evolution in us. Yeah, we saw that. Nobody, well, some people take photos forever. What what made you feel like? Paid. Yeah, yeah it's, nobody's it's, making money. Only a select you can make, few. You can make a little bit, but you're not. You're. I mean, you're not running a business. You're gigging, yeah. basically. Unless you're grandfathered into this, like old I mean, school talking, photographers. Let's be honest. I mean, even yeah, you're it, talking one hundred fifty, two hundred fifty dollars. For a photographer, yeah. I mean, we charge like 100 an hour to go shoot some photos, but at the same time, you know, you got to book a lot of hours in to, you know, fill up the schedule and pay back that camera, you know. So, but video, you know, you actually, and people want it so much more. Like right now, like reels are blowing up. Like people was just, it's, a photo on Instagram doesn't really go anywhere, but a reel on Instagram blows up. So everybody wants videos now. So we were seeing the change and what people needed. And we were like, you know what, let's just add video to it. So the impetus was growth was the name of the game and that was where growth was. This is the yeah. only way to go. If we were yeah. gonna get serious about this, we gotta step up. Yeah. Okay, so so take me back to that time. You max out the cards, gear's <laughs> on the way. What are you thinking? We're stoked. Yeah. Can't wait till the gear comes in, start yeah. effing around with it. Yeah. Um, you know, what was the first thing you did when you, when you got the big boy toys? Um, I'm pretty sure I bought everything, the gimbal, everything. Yeah. We just basically just set it up and just started running it and yeah. checking it out, basically. No, I mean, I mean, did you do a campfire session first or this pool thing first, or did you no, take it out to a the, concert? The first yeah. campfire session we actually did was with our photography cameras. Yeah. And that's after we saw that and we're like, we're going to start doing this. We cannot be doing that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we can't be putting out yeah. that quality yeah, yeah. of video. So if we were, we're going to take this. Seriously. We were already getting you know some gigs for some video, and we we're doing it with our video, uh, photo cameras. Which gotcha. I mean, photo cameras nowadays can do video. Right. His I mean, cannot. I mean, he's yeah. got a great photo camera. The, yeah. The, the, the D810 Nikon. It's a beast of a photo camera, but not the best uh, video. And that's why I, first we were like, we need to make the step up because if we're getting into video, this is just not going to cut it in the long run. So we went full into the cinema cameras. And uh, and that's where among it, other things too, lighting <coughs> and yeah. uh, zoom recorder. Because when we go out to do gigs, yeah. one thing that we can provide that a lot of people can't is the live, the live audio. audio. So literally, hmm. not only can we record live audio to put over a reel, 
which oh, sometimes yeah. can be a little more enticing than than track audio. Yeah, but we for can sure. Also for sure. Provide the band for a small fee or a free if we feel like it. Yeah. Their whole set. Yeah. So they can have it, and that's sometimes a big selling point too. Yeah. Nice. A lot of bands like that be able to have their set from Janice, you know. Right. Yeah. So what was the first thing you did? You took it out to a concert first? Yeah, we did the the Serenation Reese Brothers. I think they're yeah, that's all in one night actually. Yeah, yeah. It was Serenation first at Janice and then went straight down the street to Floridian and yeah. jumped on with the Reese Brothers. So we wanted to test out the gear, you know. We yeah. were like, "Hey, let's go shoot a little video here, shoot a little video there." Yeah, and it came out good. Yeah. It came out decent. Yeah. Uh obviously we look at it now and we're like, "Wow, we can do so much better." Yeah. But uh, hopefully in a year from now, we're looking at stuff we did today and we're saying wow we can do so much yeah, better yeah. right we're, there's we're always, always room for growth and improvement yeah. every time we get a video it's never like oh wow this is it like this is where we want to be forever no yeah. like we need to yeah. we need to step it up with the transition the zoom yeah. zoom transitions the, the now you know, we're, hyperlapses yeah, now whatever we're adding uh, hyperlapses to it that's been a new new thing we've been learning that's uh pretty cool what do you think is the biggest contributing factor for you guys being able to share that kind of drive where you can be critical and not be self-sabotaging Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that happens to a lot of people. They get critical and they're stuck. Yeah. You you can get yeah. critical and keep moving forward. How how yeah, does that? Yeah, I mean, is... obviously, th we can. Uh, there's always self doubt, though. Like yeah. for myself, just a little insight. I got burnt out for three months. I had to take a break. Like, it was just so much gigging and stuff, and so much work that I was going into. Because it, it is mean, crazy hours too when you're talking about yeah. event photography and stuff, right? It is, yeah, and no, I got right. a wife, and you know, and. It's it's tough sometimes to uh, to gig the way that we do it. You know, I work a full time job in the daytime, and then to take off at night and to go do that till all hours of night, it can be tough. But uh, this guy has a drive like the Energizer Bunny. He does not stop. He that, does not stop. Sundays might be the one day I take a break. Like Sunday is my day to sleep. Like, yeah. If, uh, if I'm not really, if I don't have to do anything, I will catch up on sleep on Sunday. But other than that, I'm like probably three hours a night. Like I just always working on something. I can't stop. <laughs> and are you one of those people that's like, uh, my drive keeps me up. I don't need an alarm clock. My passion oh, yeah. keeps me up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't use an alarm. It's like, I just got to go. I'm always thinking of what I want to do and the drive. It's just the motivation. It just doesn't stop. And I'd never, it's crazy. Back in the day growing up, like before I got into this, I didn't have that. I literally, you know, doing construction, doing my normal day life. I got lost. I was just, you know, had no goals, no dreams, no motivation, just living it. Right, and then got into this, and we started Nature Studios, and it's been like this ever ever since, and I can't stop. So you're able to fuel each other mutually as far as that kind of drive goes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's. I wouldn't say like I'm not a self starter when it comes to this, but he is like he's got a fire like no other, <laughs> <laughs> like no other. Honestly, I, and maybe that's just because like I've been doing it a little longer, and maybe I got to that point in time where it's just like need to slow down just for a second and take a breath. He has not reached that point yet. He <laughs> just goes and goes and goes. And that's great because, like, with the time that I've needed to take a little bit of time off and a little break for my mental space, he's able to pick up and he's still crushing shit. You know, I'm still helping him edit stuff and I'm still on the back end of stuff. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the gigs. We got a lot of stuff coming up here in, uh, at the end of October. Well, not uh -huh. the end of October. We did, but... Yeah, yeah. November is going to be yeah. a busy month for us, and December is going to be a busy month. So oh, I'm yeah, it's that time of year around yeah. here. Yeah, I think it was the summer for me, man. The, just the, the heat with this summer was just— It was a little much. It was yeah. soul-sucking yeah. and draining. It sucked all the life out of me. That's just crazy. Yeah, so what's, it, cool what's it like trying to shoot those shows when it's 110 and you're sitting right it's in front something. of me and you're just it rain sucks. and sweat? I know it's, last time Pepper was here, like, uh, I was just talking about this recently. Like, uh, we were working the, the boat thing with— uh, uh, we're doing nautical sounds uh, with uh, Pier Dolphin Cruises on the boat uh, uh, when slightly, or Stick Figure was here. Yeah. We had elevators on the boat and Pepper. Nice. And then uh, then we go to the show later that afternoon. So we were working from like 10 o'clock in the morning and then going to the show and working that all, all the night too. So uh, by the time I, we worked with the elevator set, uh, Pepper was coming on. I was like about to pass out. Just had to go sit it out. Like I couldn't even like shoot the show or enjoy the show. And then, you know, Stick came back on and shot some more. But, man, it's... I mean, we're yeah, carrying sometimes. gimbals out there yeah. with cinema cameras on no, it. Backpacks this full isn't, gear. Yeah. This isn't like throwing your Fuji film <laughs> on a gimbal and being able to one finger that mother. You know? Yeah, right. This <laughs> thing is 15 pounds, and you're having to, to hold it and not just, like, hold it and crutch it against your body all the time. You know, sometimes you got to be uncomfortable... You know what I mean? And, shots, yeah. and it can definitely be an arm workout, that's for sure. Your shoulders yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely get a good workout. 
Yeah, yeah, and people that aren't from Florida and or, or transplants like me and most people, uh, you know, that heat is a thing that it's hard to realize until you're here. Like, the sun sucks yeah. it out of you in a special way. Yeah, yeah sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you don't take care of yourself. When you're out there yeah. gigging and working like that, you get in this, this, this blinders on, and it's just work, 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 work. I got a job to do. And sometimes you don't feed yourself like you're supposed to or drink water. So it can time goes quick. It yeah, does. It, it does. does. And there's only really so fast. much time for us yeah. to do certain stuff. Like, uh, uh, p- for an example, like we're at Groves Fest last year and it's our first year running a festival. So we got the in house media team. I brought my RV. We got the whole crew there. We're, we're yeah. going to kill it, right? Yeah, we yeah. did kill it. We yeah. did kill it for our first year. Yeah. But it was a lot of learning curve. Like, literally, I ran media, I ran cinema camera all weekend. He's yeah. out there running drone. The 360 uh, cinema camera, uh, trying to help the team out, like because we had like eight people with us. Uh, that's the thing. You, you think yeah. you have enough people, and you right. think you yeah, have right. enough time. Until you yeah. don't. But you yeah, never yeah. do, and you're always yeah. running to catch up. Yeah. And sometimes you abuse yourself. You know yeah. what I mean? You just don't drink the water you or eat yourself, the food yeah, like yeah. you're supposed to. But And I've learned heavy from that being a diabetic myself that i got to take better care of myself when I'm out there. So I'm working on that. I know. Uh, yeah. i, I got to say, like, when I uh, – Move, first moved down here. The summer heat was a little, a little bit more intense. I mean, Virginia it still gets hot, but right, a little bit more intense down here. I love and how people like out of town always say that like, oh, their weather's always hotter than Florida. No, I didn't say hotter. I said it it's, hot. they're always saying that though. But, like people from Arizona, I said, oh, it's no, so Virginia much worse hot. from Arizona. Virginia can get hot. But, We're in a unique pocket. Yeah, here. yeah. A, a and, pocket of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, so I started that boat detailing business and detailing RVs and boats. And I gotta say, doing that all day long, I mean, that was brutal. Now coming into doing this, like you know, holding a camera all day long, like it's 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 a lot of work, but uh, boat but was yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easier. Good like, It's a yeah, different yeah. type of work. It's, yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. it's fun to do. It's what fun we're to doing, do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. So you can battle the elements, you can battle some of the random, but what's some of the other challenges people might not think that you face mm. when you go to to do an event like that? What's just, cropped up just, to you that you didn't see just coming? Just logistics. I mean, from oh, yeah. handling stage managers to audio people who think they run the whole venue. Uh, shout out to uh, our boy Matt over there at Janice. Uh, hopefully he hears this. We love Matt. That's yeah. sarcasm. Yeah, Janice is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Janice is. Um, a, a I don't know. There's, there's a lot of different time. challenges. I think people just have this misconception that we're just there dicking off and we're just having fun and. We're not working. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people think we're don't just realize there. what the work. Entails. Yeah, we're just there to hang yeah. out or to be backstage. Like I could care less about being backstage. <laughs> the only reason why I want to be backstage at a big festival is to stay away from people. Yeah, because I'm not in your mind frame. Right, the fifteen thousand there that are here to enjoy the show. I'm not here for that. Right, I'm here it, for yeah. work. Yeah, it so is. A, it like, is a weird yeah. dichotomy. It is. Yeah. You got drunk people and people have partying and. More power to you and awesome, but like I'm just not in that mind frame. So, like as far as like that goes, like I think people just have a misconception that maybe our jobs are piece of cake and just fun all the time. Yeah, right. Uh, it's we, not. We like to get into the crowd sometimes, get some crowd shots and stuff. But like you gotta be really careful out there. Like they, some people like he's saying, like you're drunk and they're not worried about your you know ten thousand dollar camera you know that you're walking around with. I mean, and you know getting some mosh pit shots are great, but you got to be uh, staying your ground. Like, I, you know, I've You're had some right. stances, you know, that you got to get a perfect stance and put some elbows out to even get <laughs> yeah. a photo, you know. Like, it's it's not easy. And, you know, you're taking risk, you know, so. Uh, so it is work. Yeah. And it it's is definitely work. It oh, is work. work. It, it is work. You guys are putting into work. But it is fun and you are having the fun. We yeah. are, yeah. Oh, yeah. For each of you, maybe individually, maybe together, where is the where is the biggest point of enjoyment when you get to see that picture back, color corrected, that video back edited? Where is the point where it's really welling up in you? Yeah, I'm doing my thing. For me, it's the content. Yeah. When when we put something together that I'm proud of, uh, that's that's where I, like your push I, and publish yeah. moment. Yeah. 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 When that, we're making something kick ass, where we give it to a band and the band shares it and they think it's kick ass. Yeah. That's that's what I get out of it. Yeah. And, and it's still the music too. Like we love the music. We're passionate about the music, but right. at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, to see, you know, what we what we finish, you know, our finished content. That's really what makes it worth it. You know. Yeah, for me, it's yeah. all about the content. Uh, the campfire sesh. We do that stuff for free. Yeah, we're not getting paid for that stuff. Uh, I just I just want to grow and continue to put out good shit. Yeah. What kind of advantage, if any? 
do you think that it's had for you guys being that you are fans and you are passionate of the work that you're capturing and you're not just pre pre predominantly photographers who are like, ah, oh, this is an opportune thing to photograph? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's doing what you love, you know, it doesn't get no better than that. I mean, you love the music, we love working with the cameras, you know, that's, that's definitely a passion right there. Like, yeah, spurring like, creativity, I think, yeah. and just trying to get something out of ourselves that we didn't know we actually had, I guess. Because when I started this, I didn't know I had a creative bone in my body as far as photography, videography. Not to say that I put out the best content in the world, but I feel like we're pretty creative and, and we're learning each and every day. And having a good time doing better. it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. This guy more than me. He has a, he has a lot more fun when we go out. Like he, likes, yeah. he likes to party a little bit, you know. But Well, I mean, good. You got him yeah. around to balance you then. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we're yeah. yin and yang, you know. He, yeah, he yeah. goes all out. I'm the one that kind of is like, hey, bro, like, take it down a notch. So take me now a little bit back. We're going to Tarantino again. From the campfire yeah. sessions, you start with just the one in the pit. Now you got a 10, 10 foot pit. How many of you have you done? What's the future of that look like? We we did Joey Calderero. We did a uh, when we first got our uh, cinema cameras, we brought in Bada Scott uh, to do our sound. He does our sound, so we yeah. gave him a campfire sesh. We did Kana, Kaim, and then Kenny Mullins. They came through. Um, that was our first time running with the cinema cameras. That was a learning experience for us and one that we learned a lot from. Our next yeah. one was Never Less, which I don't know if you were able to check that out. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's that when we one, got the full setup. We yeah, actually we, we set up the backdrops. We got the lighting better. We got the camera stations yeah. better. So we figured so out a lot. What just we like were doing. you here and keep, keep the hotel empty. You've had to grow and, and make tweaks and stuff every single time you do a show yeah. and learn from the past show. And yeah, I, I swear in episode two, Brandon didn't look like a Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard you had a white balance yeah, issue. Yeah, there, yeah, a little yeah. bit, yeah. 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 That's so the have, blue episode. That was our blue the, face. Yeah, the, you have yeah. these issues, but you work through yeah. them and you learn from them, and that's what we've done, and we, we are very excited that very soon, what, November 9th, we got uh, – what, what, what's his name? Zekali. Zekali coming yeah, in. From uh, Arizona. They're coming through Florida, so we're having them swing by November 9th. Hopefully we'll have Serenation very yeah. soon. We haven't locked that in we're, quite yet, but they're excited to, to come through, so hopefully we'll get them out there. Yeah. And just continue to build the caliber of bands that are coming out yeah. and provide good content for them. I mean, I think there's enough content in this world that both Sugar Shack and us can oh, for basically sure. yeah, yeah. do the same That's, kind of thing. I think we've differentiated ourselves uh, quite a bit from them. Uh, yeah. We owe a lot to them. We have oh, nothing yeah. but love and respect for those boys and Eddie down there at Sugar Shack and admire the hell yeah. out of them. They, well, they the reggae them. scene in general has been really good at feeding itself mm -hmm. and yeah. all of the boats rising. Yeah. You yeah. know, that was one of the things in, in just a little self-disclosure about it, that I loved being a part of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was, it. there is always some competitive nature in things, but there was an overarching cooperative nature, yeah, which exactly. which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, you definitely see that in this this scene. It's an overwhelming uh, amount of love and help from people, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, sure. so that's a unique thing to be a part of. So do you try to do the, the campfire sessions? you try to do them uh, once a month, twice a month, or you just do them when opportunity arises? Or what's your, well, what's we, your right. production schedule like? When we started first, it was cooler out, right? Yeah. And then we, I think the one we did with Kenny and them was a little bit warmer out. So we decided, you know what, let's not do any more campfire sessions when it's 100 degrees out yeah, yeah. it makes a little Fair. more sense yeah, to do yeah. this maybe in the cooler months and then let's go ahead in the summer months uh turn it over to the pool yeah ah. so the we're, poolside sesh. we're re decorating the pool area and getting that set up so then that way we will run the poolside sesh during the summertime and then the campfire sesh during the cooler nice and then on top of that we'll give a little shout out to captain captain christian uh yeah at pier dolphin cruises in st pete uh he's hired us um for the past probably six months to do his events and he's kind of doing yeah. the same kind of thing but it's on his boat he takes about 40 people out and yeah. he hires a band he's had brett from uh uh, Pepper, he's had uh, Jackson from the Elevators, Article Sound System, yeah. Cashed Out. A lot of good bands have come out there. Yeah. Surfer Girl, Roots, Ballyhoo. Yeah. Dang, Roots. nice. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of good bands, but we actually film a, a thing called Nautical Sounds for him. So basically, it's a campfire sesh. 
or yeah, yeah. You know, so we got us like, over there. We got Bass Scott running sound just like we do at the campfire sesh, just on the boat now. On the boat, and yeah, and it's an acoustic type thing. It's, yeah, it's yeah. an yeah. acoustic type thing. Yeah. Full full sound though. Hookup we got Bada, like you said, running sound for us. So we got professional sound being done. You yeah. got us running video, so we make some pretty decent videos for that. We've had yeah. we've had some interesting times. Oh, uh, the last one went on the Reese Brothers. Yeah, yeah, that went was on fun. at night. That uh, was fun. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> choppy. Okay, and, we, got, uh, we got our sea legs that night. Gimbals yeah. do a lot, but. but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't help out when you're rocking five, six feet. No, yeah, yeah. So the like, deadliest catch like, gimbal. We're trying to film this, and like yeah. we're like bouncing like this. Like Charlie's playing his drums, his, like, his snares yeah, the drums bouncing like up. Rolling over Kevin had, had to, to sit something. down because he was rocking too much, and it was it just was, crazy. It was a fun time, though. That's fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then and then editing the footage, yeah, <laughs> we had to you know make it make the footage to where nobody's getting seasick watching this. That so. was gonna be my next question. <laughs> so can you use that? Oh, yeah, yes. we, we ended we up had, using it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, warp stabilizers are a hell of a drug, and uh, <laughs> they work out very good, I guess, for w what we did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we stabilize it with our gimbals as best we can, and then we use uh, some stabilizers in Premiere Pro, and you know that that helps finish it up. But we made it work. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So will you continue to do those throughout? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He hires yeah. us to come out yeah. on the boat. So and he sets them those. up on a regular schedule. That's like a year-round thing? That's a monthly yeah. type thing. That's more yeah. frequent than our campfire sessions have been. And that's just because we're ever doing so much work out there. We're always doing work to kind of improve it out there. And he kind of wants everything to be done before we basically do it. You yeah. know what I mean? We yeah. want to yeah. kind of be – make all our mistakes the last couple of times and fix them before we do another one. Yeah. But like I said, November 9th, we're excited to have Zeke Lee out and we're going to be doing what our third, third one. Yeah. And then soon after that, I'm hoping that till about February, we'll be booking them up probably once every two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. We'll I'm definitely hoping. at least have probably one a month during these cooler times of the year. But we're bouncing. We're yeah. bouncing with campfire sesh, with nautical sounds, with our gigs that we got coming up. So yeah. it's like, there's only so many days in a calendar. You know? That was, that was going to be my next question. What, what part of all of these things you're doing? Do you want to prioritize? Because you inevitably have to. Brian prioritizes everything. <laughs> he does everything. Me, I pick and choose. Yeah. Yeah. I pick and choose what I do. I'm like, this is what's on the schedule. You let me know if you're going to join me. <laughs> we still, uh, from time to time do free stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. we're not always getting paid. Sometimes you like, we like the pepper show and slightly stupid and fortunate youth. You kind of got to do some free stuff to get work sometimes to put yeah. out some, some good content. So, uh, he's been doing some stuff. He's been gigging lately, pretty strong, yeah. uh, stick figure. He did recently Jackson's elevators. Um, yeah, yeah. All kinds of stuff. So, so are you hoping to be able to get some of those bands to, while they're here on tour, come down and do we would the campfire love to, session? But yeah. we also realize that Sugar Shack has set up an established thing. Ah. Yeah. And a lot of these big bands, when they're running through, they're going to make that stop down there. Right. Yeah. Which is perfectly fine. Yeah, right? yeah. And some of the bands don't have an extra day while they're in this area, so we can't catch them right away, but we're hoping to catch them. We take you know. what we can get. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. not everybody's on the same level or the, yeah. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know. Yeah. And yeah. scheduling, too. I yeah. mean, when they started out, I'm pretty sure they didn't start out booking getting the bands down there that they got. You know oh, I mean? no. They yeah. started out a lot smaller, and they built up good, yeah. great content like they have now. Right. And that speaks for itself. Like, yeah. they don't, I'm sure they don't have to sell anything. They basically say, hey, you guys want to come through, do a sesh? And they get the bands come through, you know? <laughs> yeah. They yeah. built that up. They I was going to say, and that's a matter of being in the game for a yeah. minute. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, what, they've got 10 years, 8 years? Over 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah. They've yeah, been, I mean, yeah, they're I've been absolutely them since killing the beginning. It. I love them. Like, they're amazing. <laughs> I don't know if you were able to get out the regular rise up the last couple of years since... I don't know what the last survivors. one was I was at, to be honest. But, but. Sugar Shack started a, their own stage, basically. And it started out small. A little tiny stage, still putting out great content. But last year, they they literally have yeah. almost the same size stage as the Vibe stage, where they're doing yeah, their own content setup. and stuff. I mean, Those guys are doing like acoustic it. stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. they're doing their, their Sugar Shack sessions. I can never say that. I know it is a tongue twister. <laughs> I can never say that. They're doing that at Reggae Rise Up, and they're doing a fantastic job. And Very hopefully, cool. eventually, later on down the road, we can do something like that. You know right. what I mean? We can grow a team. We, like we've they talked got. to you, like we run uh, media for a couple of events, like uh, Canna Feast and uh, um, Florida Groves. Florida Groves, and like Canna Feast has talked about setting up a little side stage, but we just haven't really gotten it to you know really 
You well, know, it's always a matter yeah, of so time. It's a lot, you know, I mean, like, you know, just like we you know about it, it's just a lot to set up. And can we have it already in time? If not, then, you know, I'm not going to do it. So, and, and another thing Sugar Shack has an advantage is I believe they've got a bunch of guys that are like minded, kind of like me and yeah. Brian are. But and that so, takes a while. It's it does. so hard We're, to build up that team yeah. because, like I just said, we don't always get paid. So we have to be willing to work for free. Not everybody is willing to hustle. Yeah. And to work for free. Yeah, that or, was like, well, we came to Nature Studios. If you're not willing to jump on one here and there for free and, you know, hustle, the extra, go the extra mile, then you're not going to really be able to work out in this. Like, everybody yeah. on this team hustles. Well, everybody. that's having your end goal yeah. clear between the two of you. Yeah. So how often do you manage that? Do you got to sit down every couple of weeks and say, wait a minute, make sure we're still pointing the same direction? <laughs> I think we always keep each other on our, on each other's yeah. toes as far as what we want to do. Me yeah. particularly, I'm pretty. He handles a lot of the scheduling and stuff, and and booking and stuff like that. So I stay on him about that and making sure that we get keep our schedule full. And yeah. yeah, just it's basically just putting the blinders on. Yeah, focusing forward, ever forward, never backwards. Yep. Yeah, right. Well, if a shark stops swimming, he dies, right? Exactly. <laughs> That's, right yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> and you can't put him in a square tank. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the next couple of months look like then? We're heading into your busy season. We uh, are, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're uh, talking about uh, probably doing some uh, article galleries, uh, recaps for the Reggae Rise Up events coming up. Uh, we got some uh, um, the Campfire Sesh coming up. We got Fortune Youth coming up. Uh, Canna Feast, we got November yeah, 18th. Canna Feast, yeah, this that's is, gonna be what, the sixth annual? Uh, yeah, I think Canna it's Feast, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brian Bruno throws a great event every single yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shout yeah. out Brian. Um, yeah. Brings in a lot of great bands, a lot of great vendors, and he's uh, fortunate. And a big, we, huge heart. We oh, fortunately yeah, yeah. have, have uh, formed a good relationship with yeah. him, and he takes good care of us every year. Yeah. And hopefully we're doing the same for him, and we continue to build a good relationship yeah, with so him. So November 18th, that's going to be a good one. That's in Port Charlotte. So that's going to be fun. Looking yeah, that's to always that. a blast. Yeah. And then hopefully uh, Florida Groves back in March. We got a wedding in April. Yeah, we're actually going up North Carolina uh, in April for a wedding. So and That's another thing. We're yeah. trying to just not do music, but yeah. weddings and commercials. and. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we're actually doing a coffee shop uh, uh, November 2nd. Yeah. Uh, we're doing the coffee shop here in St. Pete, doing a little uh, video shoot for them. Uh, cool. Yeah. We did a commercial a while back for this guy who developed this uh, all-terrain wheelchair, basically. Yeah. Eco Heck rover. yeah. Eco yeah. rover. So yeah. we did a commercial with him uh, early on, and we've done a, com- a couple commercials, some real estate work. Yeah. We're looking to expand not only into music, but into everything else yeah. that's going to pay the bills. Everything and, that needs marketing, yeah. we can pretty much help out. So. so it's kind of one of those moments where when you saw growth had to be through video, now growth is absolutely through expanding beyond. Yeah, it's not, it, uh, yeah, it's not through music. It, that, let that be clear. The, our, us being successful is not going to be through music. It's going to be through the other ancillary things yeah, that we can do. Is what we How love. broad of a yeah, net yeah. you can toss. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because those things, honestly, they they will pay the bills. Yeah. Music, oh, yeah. you, there's only so much you can charge. You know yeah. what I mean? You're working with an opening band. There's so only so and much they're I mean, getting paid. Most of these bands, it's a tight world. You know, it's a they, tight they, budget they got, world. They got to break their budget in between all their band members, you know, so it's... Not to mention, you know, you know team that yeah. they got on, on the road with them as well. Oh, so it's, every, it's everybody. It's a lot that goes... You know, divide it up. So you can't get but so much out of that. So yeah, everybody knows the touring musician pie is getting cut yeah. Yeah. mad thin. So yeah. we'll we'll go out there and honestly, we'll throw out deals that it's hard for them to say no to. Yeah. Even, but that's back to your drive to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So let me get you out of here on one curious question that just came up to me, and then I got a fun question for you. The curious question that just came up to me uh, while we were saying this is: Have you ever thought about working with like? metal bands since we have such a huge we work with the offspring yeah we have well, such a huge metal world around here and like you know it used to be a common thing for metal bands to do yeah. acoustic stuff and it was like you know that's how mtv unplugged came to be true yeah. it used to be a cool thing you know you could have you ever thought about doing a campfire session oh, with like a metal band definitely. well kind of i mean nevertheless is not really metal they're more like 
punk. Right? Yeah, they're skate punk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, I'm definitely but, down. Yeah, we're down. We don't discriminate. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. just we're doing. No, it just kind of it just kind of came to like we're doing we're these bands because we kind of have an in with a lot of these bands. Right, right. Yeah, we yeah, know yeah. a lot of these bands, but, yeah, so it's we're easier definitely... to contact and, and get them on the same page as us. But yeah, metal we're, shows would be awesome to do. Well, everybody in the K, the family that's seeing this, and we'll talk about this. And we've had a bunch of musicians in that I know could do incredibly cool acoustic stuff with you. Oh, maybe that'd be awesome. maybe we got to get them we in. We'd love to. Hey, yeah, if yeah. there's anybody listening, you guys are interested in coming out and doing yeah, a campfire set. Contact us. Hit us up on Instagram. Send us a message. We'll be more. Yeah, than happy I don't. To have know, you out. I don't know why they hadn't thought of me until I was looking at you whilst <laughs> talking. Yeah, I mean, I guess the reason why we probably haven't thought about it is because the vibe. Like when you're thinking of a campfire sesh acoustic, you're thinking about like kumbaya around the fire, nice and calm. Yeah. But now that you mention it. I mean, a big can, ass bonfire. Nah, we can raise it. Yeah. Oh, just bit, but I know. mean, but it's you know, <laughs> and, and in the reworking yeah. of you know how metal bands can, a lot of their songs started on acoustic sure. guitars yeah. and uh, things yeah, like that. So they strip back to that more yeah. personal yeah. nature yeah. that reggae music has. That a lot of and music some of these has. metal bands, you know, well, actually a lot of these metal bands have that soft like you know. Uh, you know, relaxing song too. You know, like the build, more the of a mood than always yeah, yeah, aggression. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know. So yeah, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, yeah. shout out. Yeah, we'll definitely I don't, have to I think don't about know that. Why that my mind. Yeah, I mean hip hop too. I mean, why yeah, not? No. I mean, I don't know if we'd ever mess with country. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, maybe, I, I'd love to mess with some '90s country, like some Garth Brooks. But oh you know, yeah, today's country is just like I don't know, it's too poppy for me. Well, funny you should say this, and I guess since you said that, I'm going to ask you how you feel about this. I was in a waiting room the other day, and Bada Scott actually commented on this. And when I said, and I never really post on Facebook, but I had to post on Facebook. I'm sitting in a waiting room, and these country songs keep playing, and every single one of them seems like a love letter to alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> every single yeah. one. Yeah, it was like, man, your wife leaving you, your dog leaving you. These just don't yeah. hit like they used to. No, yeah. <laughs> they don't, yeah. man. I was like, what is going yeah. on? So, okay, I'm not the only one recognizing that, I guess. <laughs> So let me get you out of here on something fun. You guys can answer independently or together. I, I, I don't make the rules. I just ask the questions. Mm -hmm. If you could set up a dream gig to photograph, we'll give you three bands, not a whole festival. That's too, that's too easy. <laughs> if you could set up a dream night of photographing or videography, your whole documentation of a gig, what's the dream gig for you to, to document? Oh, geez, I'll let you go first. I mean, I, hold on, let me go first. We did kind of have that night. Oh yeah. We were randomly sitting around editing video one night and just received yeah, that was a dream come true. Received shout out to Chance the shooter, Chance Radkowski. He works a lot with uh, Article Sound System and Cashed Out. Good friend of ours. Yeah. Killer uh, video work. Him and Justin for Second Mile uh, Media. Nice. Uh, yeah. We look up to them. But basically, he was busy. He could not take this gig, so he referred us. And uh, luckily, he did. We got a message from their social media creator or content creator. Um, from the offspring who does work with like Maxbox 20 and just some 41, a lot of these big bands. So right. literally within an hour, we went from no gig to a gig in Tampa at the hard rock shooting for the offspring. Yeah. Like dang completely out of that? nowhere. Yeah. yeah. Like that was crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, yeah, no, it's, so that was like a dream come true for sure. I mean, just getting that opportunity. Uh, yeah, so we both got the knock one off the bucket yeah, list with yeah. that one for sure. I think the next one I'm looking forward to the opportunity, which I don't know when I'll get it or, or how I'm going to get it, but Cypress Hill I want to do it like for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Cypress Hill. Nice. Yeah. Uh, we did have the opportunity, uh, some randomness uh, at Reggae Rise Up. Sublime with Rome hired us. Oh, yeah. That was so we did some oh, work cool. with them yeah. last year. That was pretty cool. Uh, that's actually our highest video on our on our YouTube is about 20,000 views. Yeah. And we're, we're small YouTube. Like, we only yeah, got yeah, like yeah, 340 yeah, yeah. subscribers. Like, we just started yeah. it. So to, to have a 19, yeah, 20,000 like uh, so. 20, views. Right. And that first year is cool. an odd yeah. year. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. very odd. Yeah. Because yeah. you're trying to put out content and build it up but it just doesn't seem like it's ever going fast enough no you know consistency I mean? is yeah. your best weaponry yeah oh yeah definitely yeah. uh dream dream shoot that's that's a good question man that's hard to to answer honestly right off the top of my head um i, I honestly i've done it I, yeah, that's like true too. we're doing it yeah like to say that i would be able to when i first started listening to this genre of music and going to rise up to work with fortunate youth or you know, to work with a pepper, right? To work yeah. with Sublime with Rome, to work with an offspring, like those are pinch me moments. So I feel like I've already been able to live yeah, that. We got photos of like Nas, Tupac, you know, uh, Wu Tang. Oh yeah, Wu Tang. Uh, or not Tupac. I said, but yeah, he Rhymes. said Tupac. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, he's been on news a lot lately, so I was just thinking about yeah. that. But uh, no, um, 
uh, you know, um, Lupe Fiasco. Lupe that was a Fiasco, big one for you. That was, that was huge. Yeah, I even got to hang out with him after the show. Like that nice. was. Yeah, I mean, so many dreams come. Like it's. It's like every year, I'm like, this can't be topped. And it does every year, again and again. I'm like, it just blows my mind. Will you guys do so, the curveball question, the curveball answer? The dream gig is the one I'm doing. Yeah, yeah we're doing that, it right that, now, that, man. Sure, yeah, yeah. That's it. I mean, hell, it was a dream to go to Utah with you guys for two years in a row. I mean, the, the blast that we had I was in gonna Utah say that was, was awesome. The first year, it was awesome. But to set up my tent and my air mattress, and then 15 <laughs> minutes later, I'm sleeping on River Rock yeah. was not <laughs> fun for two days. <laughs> yeah. But the next year, though, when we yeah. rented that real world yeah, house and yeah, it was like yeah. reggae real world like, yeah that yeah, was awesome we yeah. had like 14 people in that house and we it was like yeah reggae real world that, <laughs> it was that awesome. sounds like a good idea right there it does yeah. doesn't it but yeah. yeah we had a blast and uh yeah i'm living my dream right now honestly yeah, like this is, yeah. this is fun what we're doing so i, I hope we get to continue doing it well, yeah we're like we never thought i never thought to be here like and i we didn't i didn't know this was going to get created but this like you said it kind of fell into your lap this really kind of happened like uh I told Bada I wanted to shoot bands, and then, like I said, with within like a month, I was you know with Top Shelf Music covering bands every weekend, and then you know we start in Nature Studios and we're working this every weekend. Yeah, Bada has yeah. got to give a lot of credit yeah. to Bada, and I'll, I tell this to him all the yeah. time. But the the words that he spoke into existence, because what do they say about words? Words are spells. Yeah. yeah. So basically, he he taught me to basically speak and manifest what I want in my life. Yeah. And I'm getting goosebumps right now talking about it, but like I owe a lot to Bada Scott. He's a dear friend yeah. of ours, and yeah, nothing he, but he respect. Helped, he for helped that bring man. us all together, so he's a really big part of Nature Studios yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. He, Funny he you should say it, he yeah. was here Tuesday. Oh, was yeah, he really? yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he awesome. he and I were having the talk that uh, or, or sharing the sentiment that you got to see it in your head to hold it in your hand. Yep. Yeah. So it's yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's very so funny, true. but yeah. So big shout out Bada Scott. Yeah. Great big big shout yeah. out Bada Scott and Paul D. King. <laughs> yeah, of yeah. course. Paul Paul is a great guy and yeah. I don't know if I'd be doing what I'm doing right now if it wasn't for Paul. Yeah, he still helps us out all the time. Like um, we, yeah. we we won't work with him all the time. Like we're talking about doing some video shoot for the street team coming up. So whatever Paul needs, he gets. Yeah. Yeah. You know, symbiotic that. around, man. Yeah. yeah. And Paul's doing his thing now too. You know, he left Summer Survivors, but he's found this new direction and path in his life that I think he's really loving. Yeah. He was just in here a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> he, he's actually the episode we're, we're releasing right. Sunday. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Nice. awesome, yeah. Well, that, that's that one out. of the yeah. good things uh, that we've been really trying to do with keep the hotel empty is make room, literally and figuratively, for everyone to be together and network. Yeah. And yeah, you know, how I am at connecting this, this yeah. symbiosis is a big deal for me. So. Yeah, I love what you got going on here, yeah. man. I appreciate you having us out here. Yeah, really yeah. Appreciate it's it, been yeah. a lot of fun. Fun. Fuck it's yeah, been great man. to see yeah. your beautiful face. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you guys, man. I had yeah. an absolute blast hearing from we you. We've too. got more yeah. to come. We're gonna we're gonna do some more campfire sessions, and we're gonna get a metal sesh kicking too. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward it. to it. Guarantee right. it. Yep. I appreciate yeah. it, gentlemen. Thank yeah, you, man. brother. Thank, Thank you. Bro. Thank you, man. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs>